Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Strike Parry Damage Character Creation Tutorial. Um, so today we're going to go through everything on how to make a character using Strike Parry Damage. Uh, from conception to the character creator spreadsheet that I made for it, um, to the uh, character sheet and how to fill that out. So, the very very first thing you need to think about when making a character is what class do I want to play? If you're going along to a strike parry damage game, you need to think about exactly what kind of class do you want to play. And you don't get any uh, perks per se from uh, doing a certain thing, unless you're a mage. The mage gets discounted prices on the spells at the very, very start of the game in character creation. Other than that, everyone else gets squat, right? It's not a case of how do you spec the best it's the case of how do you help your team the best if your team contains very few um, characters of a high HP then you might want to consider playing a tanky sort of class with a very melee oriented uh, to balance that out or in fact if you wanted to you could simply just play a class that you never played before play a mage if you usually play a fly, uh, fighter play uh, you know a fighter if you usually play a mage it, it doesn't really matter what class you play so long as you have a set objective with your character because no one wants to play a character where they don't even know what kind of weapon they're going to be using or what they're going to spec into and it just helps deciding that and making that a much faster process for you Second thing you need to think about, what would be a fun, possibly eccentric character to RP for up to 4 hours? So, when you're playing strike parry damage, the expected uh, time to uh, run time of the whole game is going to be 4 hours, right? And then you can have lunch breaks in between if you're doing it in midday, but it's usually around about 4 hours in total you're going to be RPing that character for potentially up to four hours. I suggest in strike parry damage you make a couple of characters you know maybe uh, two, three or maybe even four if you feel like it um, but you need to uh, to have a character that you're willing to play up to four hours because I've had people in games before who, li who simply got bored of their character and they didn't make more than one character so when they, they got bored they killed themselves in the game and they simply just left they left the session it was uh, very sort of telltale of the fact that you need to have a character that you can play for up to four hours and personally uh, I've, I've uh, been a, a playable character in a couple of these games I do find play as an eccentric character much more fun than playing as a, uh, a normal character it just keeps you sort of a little bit more engaged in the story and the fact that you have to think in a different way and uh, sometimes in a more in entertaining way so um, I recommend going with an eccentric character but hey you know you do you if you want to play a, a you know, a boring old fighter, if that keeps you fun and engaged for four hours, great, go for it. Another thing you need to think about is, is your character a gimmick? A gimmick character can vary in what it actually is, but the way that I define a gimmick is a character that is nonsensical and not fun to play. So a gimmick character is something where it doesn't really sort of fit in. You're you're doing it simply just you know for the lols, or um, you're doing it as a as a very uh, self penalising character. If if you make your character purposefully bad, at a lot of things you know simply because you know haha it's funny. To, to be bad. I've never understood why some people do that, but hey, some people like that. But honestly, I can recommend as a DM that you don't play a gimmick character, because if you play a gimmick character, you're more likely just to get bored and feel like you want to drop out of the session. So try not to play gimmick characters, try and play something interesting, unique, don't sort of, you know, make a character based around something that you didn't really come up with yourself because uh, that always tends to become a gimmick character because you tend to exaggerate 
what the uh, the character that, you, that you're uh, basing your character off is doing and sometimes it just feels really gimmicky and and uh, plasticky and just not very not not very nice to play so yeah you need to think about does that character fit in the universe the DM is always trying to create a universe in their story, be it through the main quests, side quests, or simply just telling you about the universe. The one thing that you need to think about in regards to actually designing your character from a background point of view is does it fit the universe? Say I was putting on a game and the game was taking place in a sort of a Scandinavian country, you know and uh, it it was very very cold and uh, you know the population is very very uh, low there I wouldn't exactly be uh, there, there wouldn't be very high chances unless it's in your universe but in my universe it wouldn't be very high chances that I had a sort of Asian kind of eth ethnicity if I if I was going to be in, in Scandinavia you know it wouldn't necessarily fit the universe or if you tried to play uh, let's say you were in a, a country that absolutely hated orcs and you try to role play as an orc <laughs> it, it just wouldn't work it wouldn't fit the universe so try and make it fit within the the dmc universe you know i, I encourage you to uh, push boundaries you know it's always good to find out exactly where you stand you know say that you're a tree before you say that you're a human to see how far you can push the dm but other than that you know make sure that it fits within the universe you need to think about can you play the character in a game practically there are plenty of uh, examples I know of uh, where I've DM'd games and characters have been too focused around one key aspect of the key aspect of the character and they failed everywhere else and then they've complained that they can't you know do everything that they wanted to do well that's the the problem with making a character yourself and making it um, based around uh, one single thing. So you need to think about can you play that character in a game practically. While you may feel tempted to completely spec all of your points into one single attribute or one certain set of attributes, make sure that you can actually function as a character. You know, if you, if you want to play as a, a character that's like a a brilliant mage user but they've got uh, uh, an agility and a strength of everything of zero you know <laughs> they're basically as defenseless as a kitten or you know they, they can't run you know they can run away as well as a stone then that's their choice but pre-game they should have thought can I play this char this character practically alright so that about does it for the um actually uh uh, conceiving a character. Uh, this is sort of the the thing that will take you maybe a couple minutes to do. Uh, this 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 one. The next step is uh, very very fast. Not much effort at all. But um, it's important that you understand how this works. So we have the base stats here. So the the way that strike parry damage works is that it's all on a base stat of. Special M. This is very heavily based off the Fallout one. I basically took the Fallout system and modified it for a D&D esque kind of game. But what it is is it's strength, perception, constitution, which basically acts as an endurance for those Fallout fans, charisma, knowledge, agility, luck, and magic. So we'll go through all the base stats and see where you should uh, spec into them. So strength of course would govern things like combat but it also does govern things like a brute brute is a, a charismatic ability that allows you to intimidate enemies so you can see there that uh, that's where strength would come into handy if you were trying to play a character who would uh, you know bash other um, NPCs down uh, emotionally to uh, further their gains uh, you have perception. Perception is all about uh, noticing things, and um, it's about parrying and uh, aiming, and uh, you know, uh, taking in the surroundings of the world, understanding things that you see before you. Um, then you have constitution. The constitution basically only determines your HP and your attractiveness. I'll add that too, but. 
it's very important that you spec into constitution here's why if I change constitution now don't care about the points I'll go on to that in a minute if I change that to zero you'll see that my base HP is 80 I can redistribute the points elsewhere but that means I'm always gonna have a HP of 80 I can get some extra armor maybe add in an extra you know 10 armor points to boot you know bump up my HP a little bit but really you need a higher HP if you want to be a character that isn't dependent upon armor and armor is hard to come by especially in the D&D uh, not the D&D sorry I use that term a little bit interchangeably in the um, SPD that I'm doing right now which is a pirate one where they didn't have as much armor armor is going to be very hard to come by so make sure that you spec well into constitution um, then you have uh, charisma. Charisma is, of course, simply the ability to charm other people into, you know, doing your bidding uh, without you actually doing much effort other than waggling your silver tongue. Uh, knowledge. Knowledge is all about uh, being witty, being, uh, you know, intellectual, being able to know things about the world. You know, read other people's uh, minds. I know that sounds a little bit magical, but I'm talking psychological readings where you can, you know, like body language, where you can see someone shivering and you can uh, act upon that. Um, magical knowledge, it affects magical knowledge too. So even if you're not a mage, there is a small chance that you can still cast enchantments on weapons, um, which is, you know, somewhat useful. It can be useful. Uh, and I think, I think, I think, I think it might affect, uh, yes, it affects medicine. So, um, if you want to be a very good uh, healer, you need good knowledge, good knowledge, good medicine, you'll be fine. Agility. Agility is all about maneuverability, maneuvering on the battlefield, but it's also about uh, parrying and aiming. Oh, no, sorry, not aiming. <laughs> that one's perception. It's all about um, uh, not parrying either. God damn it. It's basically just about moving. <laughs> I'll, I'll stop there before I mess things up even more. Luck. Luck is a, a very special system. Um, say I had a roll. I've got a uh, luck of four now. Say I had a roll of six on a d10, and I wanted to get a ten because ten is the only way I could succeed. I could use all of my luck points, they act as individual points, change my luck to a whopping zero, but then I could change that so I can now have ten points, and uh, ten points on that die, and then I can pass my roll. It might not sound like a lot, but if you spec enough points into luck, you'll end up having uh, a battle where you saved your luck points and you have like nine luck points, I think ridiculous and then the enemy is about to kill you and you've got this character that you really like because once you die in strike parry damage your character is pretty much gone forever unless someone can pick up your gear for you you know so it's a uh, it's very important to uh, it's vital to keeping yourself alive in an outnumbered fight luck is you know, when you're about to die, you're about to lose, you try and cast a medicine roll, you fail by one, but you put that luck point into your medicine, you get that healing pack, and you can fight another day. So it's very important for, for things like that. Then we have magic. So magic is uh, all about magical abilities, of course. It's about uh, casting enchantments, casting spells, and having a simple knowledge of magic. So, those who are uh, a mage sort of uh, character would find themselves gravitating more towards magic, so they can cast spells very easily. Uh, that that would be uh, the, the most benefit that you could have as a mage to have a very high magic. And uh, well, luck has it. I've just thought of a character. We're going to call him a uh, Magey McMageface, or whatever I called him on the sheet that I, uh, I did before the recording. So we're going to give him a magic of 9, even a luck of 3. Notice how all of the stats are changing here. 
and oh notice here we have 30 points we have to reach 32 points so what this is all about is you have to reach 32 points uh, for in the point section above for all characters to balance in the game this is what I, this helps prevent against gimmick characters right you have to spec 32 points into your character otherwise it's an invalid character and you cannot play it at the game it means that it creates a good system of balance for all of these um, for all of these roles where you're not too underpowered but you're not too overpowered as well because remember these stats don't change in the game they always set they always sit here as a base stat and it's only through effects that you can actually change this so you know you have to uh, keep this keep keep this under consideration so the uh, the points we got two extra points so as a mage I feel as though I would be slightly better at agility and knowledge. So let's pop a little four in there, a little three in there, and uh, I think I might need to change my character sheet base because I think I might have got the, the prep wrong. But uh, ooh, we'll go with this. So we see here that we have our base stats finished and we have all of these done here. So we have a HP of 95. I won't read through the rest of these. You can see them here if you really are in that interested. Pause the video and you can have a look at what your stats would have been if you'd have gone through the exact same thing as me. But here is where it gets ever so slightly complicated. Right? You do this thing called selecting, go from HP all the way down to wit. Alright, this is hard. Press Control C, go onto your character sheet base, Bobby McMajie face. Select all of these. I'll make this a, a public character sheet as well, and hit Control V. All of your stats are now here. I'll quickly double check, or you know, just go over it quickly again by Control C, Control V over here, and just doing these so that it's not wrong. In case I did get any, ah, oh, they're all right. Um. So, I'll take you through the sheet. We have the name. The name is, of course, important because you need to remember who you are. Uh, remember your name. So, if I say, you know, hey, Bob, you know, you owe me a, uh, five gold, you know, it's, uh, you don't get surprised that I'm pointing at you. Uh, you have a HP in the right here. Now, this isn't necessarily because the HP is, you know, so important I have to repeat it twice. This isn't an error. Right, what it is, is you can cross out the HP and change it. And in fact, I may end up just simply moving the HP over here a little bit more. Don't worry, this, this sheet isn't uh, public yet, so you can't access, access it just yet. It'll be fixed when you guys get it. But um, the HP can be crossed out multiple times. It can be rewritten in so that as your HP changes, you can write it on the sheet. Very, very simple. And um, always, always, always remember, if you do run out of space, go on the back of the sheet. Go on the back of the sheet. I cannot stress this enough. Always go on the back of the sheet. I printed 50, 50 odd sheets, my uh, latest uh, sort of uh, homebrewed RPG before I invented the system. And uh, it is so much paper. It was just an absolute you know, uh, kerfuffle because I, I couldn't tell what sheet was what I had to invent a whole categorizing system with little colored blocks on the sheet oh, it, was, it was a mess so just tell your um, your, uh, your your playable characters uh, your, your, you know your players to write on the back of the sheet if they want to write any notes if they run out of space do as such background a lot of people like to write uh, little little miniature stories about the background of the character. I mean, Bob McMajie face. He's only a little um. There's only a little uh, plot point here. Not plot point. Not even a plot point. Uh, he's just a little uh, example character. So I won't write anything. But if you wanted to write stuff there, or you could put a little image there. You know, if you don't really feel like writing or you want to add it to your writing, uh, then you could pop a little image there helps to see what your character looks like especially if you have models and the model doesn't look like exactly how the character would look it just helps now you have the inventory and perks so we start off with 300 gold I'll write that now sorry <laughs> caps uh, 300 gold every character starts with 300 gold to begin with now as a mage 
Bob McMagey face gets two spells at the start for the price of one, so keep that in mind. But here we have our inventory, we have our perks. You can collect perks as you go through, which is why I've included it in the inventory section. And uh, I suggest that when you're writing down a perk, you write down what it actually does as well, um, so that you don't need to keep on referring to sheets. But we can now go onto the official DM sheet, that's what I'd like to call this. Uh, I'll share this in a future video as well. I'll be making a video in the future um, for the DMs, trying to uh, DM a session of SPD, and also for the players to uh, better understand how SPD works. And uh, both of those will include this uh, this whole base sheet that I've been developing over the past couple of days. These are the skills. At the start you can pick two skills, and as you progress through the game, be it through rolling critical 20s and the DM deeming that you get an extra skill, or by simply learning things from uh, people who you've talked to, you can add skills to your... Uh, to your um, to your list of uh, skills in your inventory as you go through. But like I said, you get two to start off with. You can see they're, they're coloured here. Uh, there's a quick little chart here. Also, that's wrong. That should be out of uh, nine. <laughs> this, yeah, as you can tell, this is a very work in progress game. 32. You can see all of the colours here. Pause the screen now if you want. You can have a look at what all the different colours uh, correspond to. And then we have a look at the uh, skill sheet, and you can see I've color coded it, so a lot of that shows what it, you know, branches into. But we've got a one-handed pro plus two to rolls. A lot of this is simply just plus two to rolls. Um, it'll that should be minus uh, minus two to attractiveness because minus is always better in the system. Um, but yeah, there are a couple special ones, so parry strike and strike after a parry. Again, I'll explain that in the combat system, the, the fully done combat system that will come in the players and the DM's guide. And fast reload, get to fire twice in a round. So uh, basically, even if you have a bunch of weapons, I'll go on into, into a minute where you can dual wield them, you get to do that twice. So if you end up having four pistols, you can now fire eight rounds in a volley. So in one round you can potentially shake out a target. That might sound a little bit OP, but considering the fact that other characters in the game can get to just as effective, the mage is even more effective than that, it's not really that unbalanced. And uh, of course we can see here that we've just got a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of stats. In fact, you know what? You know, I'm just going to do some live changing now. Uh, that's not plus or minus. And uh, I'll just add that little rolls word in just while I'm here. There we go. Silver tongue. Like I said, there was a, a thing earlier uh, where you could uh, minus 50 gold to prices. You do need to pass a speech check before you do that, but you can uh, get a lot of money, a lot of money off the prices. It guaranteed 50 gold. So, yeah, uh, witty banter. Please DM a pass save if you uh, if you do a wit test instead of having to roll for it. You can see whether you can just do a witty response to the DM, and if the DM giggles or laughs or finds it interesting, then you can uh, pass that. Again, that is uh, down to the discretion of the DM, but, you know, <laughs> only so much you can do in a role-playing game. I won't go through all the, all the rest of these, but um, you can tell from here, uh, looking at them, that they affect your character in some minor, but, you know, advantageous ways, and it's worth picking these up. It is worth picking these up, because they do add lots to roles, right? They do add plus two, and if you think about it, that's a tenth of a d20. So, you can increase your chances by a tenth, and especially if you're doing quite well as a character, you can end up doing uh, some serious uh, good. Sorry about that. Uh, I might end up uh, cutting that out. Right, so, now that we have these, I've decided that as a mage, we're going to go with mage and enchanter as our, uh, as our perks to begin with. So, mage, 
uh, and then on it write gain access <laughs> success wow uh, to advanced spells that's what that one is and uh, then we have the uh, let's just check the enchanter Enchanter. What does Enchanter allow us? Stack enchantments. Of course, stack enchantments and weapons. Stack enchantments. There we go. But we still have we still have the 300 gold here. We have 300 gold to spend. Now, you may ask, what do we spend that 300 gold on? Well, we spend that on weapons, spells, and items. So, we'll start off with weapons. So, I won't go through all of these weapons, but I will quickly go through what their effects are. You can see here what they all do. If it has a D in it, that means it's dual wieldable, so you can wield two at a time. 2D means it's quad wieldable, so you can wield four at a time. That is exclusive to the pistol. Slices, uh, which is uh, an S, gives a bleeding effect. So, this is what um, making a character bleed does. It deals 5 damage uh, for 3 turns of that character, so it does an extra 15 damage in the long run. All you need to do is nick them with your blade, and they'll uh, end up doing some uh, bleeding damage. And then we have blunt weapons. So, uh, a blunt weapon, D6 on 6, stuns for 1 turn. Some people didn't understand this, I think I might have already covered this. But, um, D6 means the die, which is a D6 on the number six will stun the character for one turn again i'll go through combat in a future video explaining uh how the combat works for the players and the dms uh, but basically all you need to know is it stuns the character and then uh g d6 on six amputates limbs doubling damage and incapacitating the enemy a little bit extreme but you know Sometimes you just want to hack off an arm, and well, I don't think anyone's going to be fighting if they do hack off an arm. However, do pay close attention to this little tiny box over here. I'm afraid I couldn't fit it all on one sheet, so I had to condense it majorly. But, um, you can upgrade the uh, item levels here for 50 gold per level, and you can increase the damage of that weapon. So, say I took a regular old short sword with a damage of 20. If I wanted to, I could pay 200 gold, turn that into a 400 gold sword, but it would end up doing 40 damage. So uh, it can be quite advantageous to do that. And if I wanted to do the same for bows, I could do that. If I wanted to do the same for daggers, I could do that. And heck, if I had an enchanter in my, um, a guy with the enchanter perk in my group, then I could end up creating some ultimate god sword, where I have a short sword that costs 400 gold with you know all of the enchantments possible stacked onto it that would be a uh, quite a uh, <laughs> quite the sword speaking of enchantments and spells we have spells just here so these are all basically uh, just elements you can imagine what they do you can call it something special if you want write it down on your sheet as uh, white horses or you know fireball whatever you want but this is basically just what it does very simple basic spells if you want to add extra things as a dm go ahead and do it but i'm afraid i don't quite have you know the time nor the patience to create whole volumes of extra abilities you can add to a spell so if you want to create a system you know, where you can modify spells, do extra damage, upgrade them, whatever, go for it. I'm not your boss, you do that. But basic spells is all you need along with the advanced spells and the enchantments slash poisons. I'll go over that in a minute. Fire. 20 damage over 2 turns. So, again, that's just going to do 20 damage, 10, turn, uh, 10 damage on the first turn, and then, uh, no, sorry, 20 damage on the first turn, 20 damage on the second turn, I should clarify that. Water, 10 damage, so base 10 damage, but it does uh, 50 d10 on 10. So if you get a, uh, a successful hit, roll a d10, if you get a 10, it does 50 damage instead. Air, stun for one turn. Stunning the character for one turn, 
bog standard, earth unable to parry. Again, I'll cover the, the combat system in a later video, but all you need to know is that having an enemy uh, being unable to parry means that they cannot block your attack. You know, if you have the highest combat initiative as a mage, whack out the earth, unable to parry, then have your friends all strike them. You can kill them very, very easily. Stack them up well, do a lot of damage. Sleep, knock unconscious for one turn. You might ask how that's different from a stun. How it's different is that if you use it outside of combat, instead of simply stunning them and keeping them awake, it's going to force the target to sleep. So if you wanted to use uh, a stealthy wizard, I don't know, do, you know, uh, you could maybe combo a sleep along with a stealth, uh, you know, to like stealth would maybe sneak up and then a sleep to, uh, you know, get the target to fall asleep and then you could wrap them up and you know take them away while they're locked in conscious and it's that kind of stuff ward blocks magical damage simple um, if you're fighting a wizard ward yourself ward your friends you know it'll stop the magical damage from afflicting them the effects still are in operation mind you but it does mean that any magical damage is unable to uh, penetrate so air will still stun earth will still be unable to parry but it will block all magical damage so yeah shock uh, deal 20 damage to the target and 20 to the closest living thing so this is a, a sense of deal 20 damage right now and you can deal 20 damage to a friend who is uh, you know, to, the, to the enemy's uh, ally who is uh, nearby them the closest one to them the thing is that you have to be careful here where you shock someone uh, but it turns out they're fighting your uh, your ally your ally uh, you'll end up doing 20 damage to them so you gotta make sure that the closest living thing to the enemy is another enemy in order to stack correctly or you know a dog <laughs> if you're feeling cruel but um yeah it's up to you to decide how to do that metal so metal simply removes armor. I'll go over armor in a future video because uh, I'm still working out some kinks in the armor. Uh, no pun intended. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's very simple. Just removes the armor stack completely uh, for one turn. So you can end up dealing damage to the base HP, and then they put on the armor afterwards. It uh, it simply just weakens the armor, turns it to rust, but then it comes back afterwards. Now we get to talk about something a little bit more complicated. I'll cover the advanced spells in a sec, but we're going to move on to enchantments. So enchantments cost 500 gold, poisons cost 200. So if you want to be an enchanter from the beginning, I recommend you spec on daggers and uh, healing things, right? Because if you have a high knowledge to do enchantments properly, then you're going to have a high medicine too, so you'll be able to uh, stack those. But what it is, is there's uh, embers, storm, swiftness, and uh, paralyze. So embers is essentially a version of fire. Now enchantments they can be affixed to weapons like bows, uh, to muskets, to uh, daggers, swords, any kind of weapon can have a uh, enchantment added onto it. Heck, even the miscellaneous item which is like a, I don't know, like a, a block of wood, it will um, still have the enchantment effect on it so actually thinking about it if you had a miscellaneous item damage increased by 20 turn it into a legendary do 25 damage stack some enchantments on it it'll be as good as a crappy short sword <laughs> so have fun with that as you wish um, but alas uh, we have uh, storm which is again it's basically just shock but simply a sword so it deals 10 damage to that guy you have to make sure though that uh, you're not the only one standing next to the uh, man that you're hitting otherwise you will shock yourself for 10 damage only for 10 damage but that's okay swiftness uh, plus two to combat initiative I'll explain the way combat initiative works in, a, in another video like I said but basically all you need to know is that combat initiative it will uh, mean that you get to enter combat first I'll, like I said, I'll cover that later, but, you know, 
you get to go faster into the fray. And Paralyze, again, it's basically just like sleep, but the character is still awake, so you can't nick them with a dagger and then do the same thing as you would to actually magic them into sleep. They'll still be awake and they'll still remember the event so they can report you to the town guards. So, uh, you know, we don't quite have any of the uh, the sleeping potions just yet. Uh, poison, sorry. Uh, or enchantments. But, again, DMs out there if you're listening, if you do want to add that, that's perfectly fine. Go for it. You know, it, the the beauty of this system is that it's unofficial, it's not printed, it's on a document, right? You can make copies of this document when I post it in the description. I'll post all of these documents in the description, by the way. If you make a copy, you can edit it as you want. So you can simply just, you know, uh, right-click, new slide, boom. You've got a whole new slide there for you. Now let's cover the advanced spells. The advanced spells are Necromancer, Summon a Zombie, Summon a Zombie through all. Uh, as an extra person to your party that the, uh, the the necromancer can control uh, they are not permanent however after the fight they do unfortunately crumble to dust so you know make make the most of it while you have it <laughs> but they do last the whole fight unless they die so and you know, just another thing you can only have one in play at a time that's uh, just a balanced thing Berserk. Send an enemy berserk. So you can send an enemy so berserk they end up attacking their closest ally, thinking that they are a playable character. Fairly sam uh, standard. Recall. Reset a speech check. Um, so it allows you to uh, basically, when you enter a conversation with a non-playable character, you fa if you fail it, then usually no one can do anything to swayed otherwise unless they're doing something else so say you use your handsomeness then try and use your brute then try and use your wit then try and use your uh, blah, blah, blah. recall means that you get to reset all of that so you can have another go at all four of those stats ether is uh, send an enemy into the void in fact you can send anything into the void it's only a small portal about the size of a man so uh you know, but you can only send limited things into the void. But basically, it's imagine a delete button. That's what ether is. However, you can only play it once per um, combat, basically. So, uh, oh, by the way, that should be 500 gold. My bad, my mistake. Um, so yeah, you can do that. So uh, when we have um, what's his name again? <laughs> Uh, Bob McMagey face. He's got 300 gold to spare. So, I'm thinking, I don't know about you guys, but we're going to have uh, two spells for the price of one. So we're going to have a fire spell, maybe? Okay, let's, let's go with a fire spell on an air spell. Fire spell, air spell. Uh, if I were you, I would write this down in a smaller text, but, you know. Uh, fire spell... And then air spell. If you want, you could write out what they do, like I did with these uh, two perks, but we'll ignore those at the moment. And that loses us 250 gold, so now we're just at 50. Now this is 50 gold. Playing off 50 gold. What can we do for 50 gold? Well, that's where the items for, fair, for sale come in. So if you uh, loot a ship or loot uh, a settlement, um, you have crates of sugar, sack of tobacco, sack of cotton, crate of milk, barrel of rum, barrel of Helena's poison, all of these different kinds of produce, and we have space for more produce. Again, simply right click, new slide, DMs out there, want even more stuff, great, we have more space. You know, can uh, copy and paste this, uh, this thing, you have a whole new section perfectly laid out for you. It's really that simple, guys. So if you want to add extra items, you can. Make sure they're priced correctly, though, in, in regards to, uh, you know, uh, price them responsibly. Think about all the other prices. Dalican wine is obviously much more expensive than a barrel of wine, because a uh, regular barrel of wine, because Dalican wine is more expensive. It's um, it's uh, exclusive wine. In the same way that you have dwarven beer is more expensive than normal beer. It's because normal beer is just humey scum beer, and dwarven beer is the true beer. So... You got all that. Um, 
but you can see here we have HP, we have healing items. We, uh, I might, I might end up adding some more items, and I might uh, end up, you know, having a smoking pipe in, in here as well, so you can smoke tobacco for a certain amount of health. But uh, overall, these are the three I have currently. Uh, so we have Alco Heal. Uh, I think you can see where I'm getting that god awful pun from. But uh, there you go. Heals 10 HP, full 45. Um, 45 is the price of it. You can craft it with rum and sugar for 15 meds. So if you uh, ever are in a situation where you have extra rum and sugar, make some alcohol, distribute it to your guys, heal everyone up. And then you have uh, health kit, which is 25 HP, and you have cough syrup. So health kit and cough syrup can only be purchased. Cough syrup is more one of those things where you get it more as a shipment than you would as a HP item. But, you know. You've got your cough syrup there. If you are really in a sorry state and you need some cough syrup, you've got it. So, and uh, it would actually be cheaper to buy two loads of cough syrup. I just realised than it would be to make some alcohol. But then again, alcohol is simply the convenience of having uh, that 10 HP ready to go. Because of course, if you're in the middle of a fight, you're going to want the thing that heals the most immediately versus the little kind of heals. So, if you want to have those, then you can do that. If you want to, uh, by the way, just going through some other quick items, you have regular meals that you can make using uh, all these different ingredients. So, a fine meal consists of uh, two of these, and uh, I'll, I'll add some meat here as another point here. Um, and a regular meal is simply just one of these things. So, it's just fish, just fruit, or a fine meal could include wine and fish. You know, it's basically just like that. And uh, so, uh, what did we say we'd get? We say we get some alcohol, and we got we got five five gold to spare, so we'll get a regular meal too, regular old meal. So, we have alcohol. Uh, I'll just put it like that, and we have a uh, regular meal, and. Uh, oh, <laughs> there we go. And I think that's the end of our gold reserves. So now we have zero gold. And at this point, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave you. Um, so this is the end of the road as it comes to making the character. Once you've run out of money, you've done all. So you've done all of your perks. Oh, I didn't mean to move that. And once you've done all your perks, you've got your background image, you've got your background uh, stuff, you've got your image, you've got your HP written up there, Bob Magey face, uh, you've got all your, all your determinations, you're ready to play a game. Now this is where I would watch the, um, if you're a player, I'd watch the, uh, the, the how to uh, play this uh, as a, as from the player's perspective um, video, and if you really care enough to give me the extra view or the extra like then um, you can also watch the version for the DMs but that does include a little bit of um, not not as in complex language but sort of as in uh, stuff that only really the DM would really care about but if you really want to meta game and you know calculate exactly the, the likelihood that you'll get a certain reward for a certain thing then go ahead be that nerdy if you want to but um no I mean, this is this is this is where I, I'll, I'll leave you I think it's a good 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 note to end on well I'll leave a link in the description uh, to all of these sheets I'll of course have to make them uh, a read-only copy but if you do want to edit them which I'm guaranteeing if you click on the link you would you can uh, go on to file I'll, I'll just stress this go on to file uh, you can go on to make a copy simply hit make a copy and you can choose a folder on your Google Drive if you have one I assume you must have one because you're using YouTube and um, y you know you have a name for the document and you can copy that so copy of character sheet base you can do that. I'm going to cancel that because this is this is my uh, my sheet. But uh, yes, yeah, so well, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you around. Bye.